Tuck. Howdy, little Joe. What's your car rank? Ah, uh, Tuck. Hey, what'd you do to your leg? Um, well, I got a new stallion out to my place. Tried to bust him. He blame near busted me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna learn to leave the bad ones to the good riders? <laughs> well, his name fooled me. Mama's boy. <laughs> Ain't that a name for a horse that's half meanest and another half even meaner? Hey, Doc, when are you going to come out and have supper with us? Thanks, Mr. Cartwright, but I got a lot of things to do out at the ranch, and, well, I can't nothing drag me away till they're done. Come on, now. There's other things in life besides running that spread of yours. Well, yeah, like what? I like, like having supper with friends or playing a little poker, dancing with some girls. If you had a spread as big as Tuck's here, you wouldn't have any time for that dancing and poker play. Duck, come on out. You're always welcome out at the Ponderosa. Thank you. Really, how's the lake feeling? Oh, tolerable, tolerable. Just tolerable, huh? How come you're so spruced up? I'm gonna meet some friends of Pies from back east. Philadelphia. I figure with some of the riffraff running around the street here, I gotta try to make a good impression. Well... The tie don't help that much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll see you. <laughs> How are you, Mart? <laughs> hey, you look wonderful. You. Feel wonderful. You look wonderful yourself. It's my my youngest boy. Little Joe, it's Mr. Melvany. Mr. Melvany, a pleasure to meet you. I heard an awful son. lot about the old days from Bob. <laughs> Lucy, dear. Lucy, this is Ben Cartwright and his son, Little Joe, my daughter, Lucinda. Well, Miss Lucinda, what a pleasure. Welcome to Virginia City and to the Ponderosa. It's my pleasure, man. Listen, let me get the bags for you. Which ones are they? Oh, let me give a hand. No, oh, that's all right. I got it. All right. Here they are right here. These three? That's it. Martin. Martin, you know, I can't believe it's been that long since we've seen each other. Oh, it is, Ben. The gray in our hair should prove that. <laughs> sure does. Hey. You didn't tell me about her. Tuck, I thought you were only interested in meeting horses. Ah. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, old Joe. All right, didn't have too dusty a trip, did you? No, fine trip all the way. Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to accept that kind invitation of yours for supper uh, tonight. Oh, uh, well, uh, Tuck, uh, I thought you said that nothing could ever get you away from that ranch of yours. What ranch? In that case, we'll, uh, we'll expect you tonight. St. Louis to go back east like it was yesterday. Martin, it can't be 28 years. It is, though, Ben. <coughs> it is. I never thought when I left I'd be corralled in Philadelphia, a place I'd never even heard of. Well, I'm sure glad to see that you've done so well. Yes, I've made some money. You know, the best thing that ever happened to me, though, was meeting Ada there and not having Lucy. That was Ada. Beautiful woman. Yes, she was. All the way. I lost Ada when Lucy was just five. Ben, you have no idea what it is to raise a child all by yourself. Oh, of course I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're talking about boys. I mean a woman child. 
I tell you, Ben, the human female filly is a woman grown down instead of up. She's just as hard to make out as her big sister. Look, she's always been a puzzle to me. Well, that's because you, you spoil the heck out of her. An only child, a girl. No, that's, that's not what bothers me, Ben. See, Lucy was a sickly child. She spent a good many years in bed. And I'd take it easy for a long time after that. Well, as a result, she found all of her companionship in books instead of in people. Now that she's grown and healthy, she still does. Mostly poetry and romantic novels. Well, you know, young girls and romantic novels go together like strawberries and cream. Yes, but Lucy gets all of her ideas of life out of these books. She hardly ever comes down to bedrock. I thought that out here we still have to claw some just to stay alive. She might just come down to earth. And neither of you have read this latest book by Mr. Charles Dickens. Don't, no, I mean. Well, I suppose it is understandable. Two Cities was only published this year. Probably hasn't reached the Virginia City bookstores yet. The bookstores? Yeah, the, the bookstores. Miss Lucinda, I'd sure admire to read it. Well, I'd be very happy to lend it to you. As soon as I finish reading it. Again. <laughs> I'm especially fond of Sidney Carton. Friend of yours? Oh, you are silly. Well, he's a person in the book. Well, the, the hero, a, a ne'er-do-well, a, a drunkard who nobly redeems himself. Uh, I didn't know a, a souse, a, a drunk, uh, could be a book hero. Oh, he was a wonderful hero. You see, Sidney Carton was in love with a beautiful woman by the name of Lucy Manette. I bet she ain't any prettier than you are, Miss Lucinda. Thank you. All my friends call me Lucy. I hope you both will. You just talked us into it. Tell, <laughs> her, tell us more about Lucy, uh, the other one. Well... Lucy Manette was in love with a handsome man by the name of Charles Darnay. But Charles was in prison, and they were just about to execute him. Oh, but Sidney Carton loved Lucy so much. Do you know what he did? No, tell me. He sneaked into Charles Darnay's cell, drugged him senseless, and took his place in prison, and died in his stead. Was that a pretty nearsighted guard if he couldn't tell the difference between them? Oh, but they looked alike. Now, do you know what Sidney Carton said just as they were about to execute him? What his very last words were? No, what were they? It's so long, I guess. Oh, nobody ever says so long in a book by Mr. Charles Dickens. Well, not when they're about to die, anyway. Now, what he said was, it is a far, far better thing I do than anything I have ever done. Isn't that a beautiful epitaph? No, I'm um, sorry. I think the whole thing is pretty silly. What? Well, the way I look at it, this fellow would have been a lot better off if he just let well enough alone. His rival dies and he has a girl he's in love with. Apparently you don't understand this kind of nobility. This, this was an, an ideal sort of love. Oh, come on. There's a big difference between being noble and being stupid. Listen, if Lucy says something's noble, then it's downright noble. And don't you go saying anything she says is stupid. Look, I'm not arguing with Lucy. I'm arguing with this for this fella Dickens, the guy who wrote the book. What, are you taking up for Dickens or something? Don't you start weaseling. Who's weaseling? He ain't here, and she is. And if she says something is noble, it is. And don't say anything she says is silly. Look, if I want to say that something is silly that this guy Dickens says or he's stupid or anything I want to say, I'm going to say it, whether it's Dickens or this guy Carton or, or Napoleon Bonaparte, if I want to say it. 
Joseph? Supper's ready. I'm sure that Adam and horses are late. Of course, they're coming a long way. I can hardly wait to see the sights around here. I'd sure admire to show you myself. Be an honor. I'm sorry, Tuck, but Lucy already has a guide. Me. I'd be delighted to have two such exceptional guides. Uh, what do you think you'd like to see? Now, uh, Adam and Hoss are doing some branding down at the South Creek. Oh, no, thank you. I mean... Oh, well, I've heard about branding. I, I don't think I'd enjoy it. Yeah, I don't suppose that'd be too interesting for a young lady. Mm. How about Indian's grief? Yeah, that's a wonderful idea. Just the ticket. What is it? It's just an old Indian landmark. Oh, now, wait a minute, Joe. It's more than just an old Indian landmark. It's probably the most romantic spot around here. Really? Oh, please tell me about it. Well, see, the Indians, that is, the Paiutes, believe that uh, the great chief is buried at Indian's grief. They mourn him. Because according to their legend, at the very beginning of time, the great Manitou, that is, the, the, the great spirit, visited his wrath upon them. And uh, after many men, women, and children had died, the medicine men told the chief that the only way that the great Manitou could be appeased would be if the chief sacrificed his eldest son to him. No. Well, the, the chief prayed to the great Manitou and asked that he be allowed to take the place of his son. He dressed himself in his finest garments and he mounted his favorite horse rode to the very top, the highest cliff, and he leaped off. What a beautiful story. The, uh, the pirates are very superstitious about Indians' grief. They never walk around the rocks there. It's taboo. They don't mind white men doing it, but uh, it's sacrilege for a pirate. Well, Lucy, dear, there's the romantic west you've been looking for. Oh, I can hardly wait to see it. When can we go? Well, I you... think we... Well, if you really want to go... Seeing I... it, it was my idea. I'll take you there tomorrow myself. Mm. How about some more cake? Oh, no. Not for me. There you are. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're late. Got held up. Oh, come on in and sit down and have something. Uh, Hoss and Adam, my two sons, meet our guests, Miss Lucinda Melvaney. Hey, country around here is getting prettier all the time. And uh, I'd like you to meet the father of the country, my old friend, Mr. Martin Melvaney. Happy to meet you, sir. Hoss, Adam. Well, how's the branding coming along? Oh, fine, boy. If the bunch of renegade pirates don't show up. They around here now? Well, sort of close by, it seems. A few days ago, they killed a couple of fellers and a woman over at Savage Station. Day before yesterday, they killed a man and a little 11-year-old boy out at the Smiths. Apparently, they were all young bucks. One of the men at Smiths recognized the leader. I guess who it was, Joe. Who? Your old friend, Sharp Tongue. What? Who is Sharp Tongue? He's, uh, he's an Indian boy I used to go to school with. Father wanted him to learn the ways of the white man. I'm afraid it didn't work out. Why? Was he an evil little boy? No, he was an Indian. Afraid children borrow the thinking of their parents. Made it worse, he was a proud Indian. I admired him for it. He did more than that, miss. More than once, little Joe got beat up defending him. My little Joe. It's a terribly noble thing to do. Why? He was just my friend. I wish you'd had more friends. 
Those murders stem all the way back to that little schoolhouse, I'm afraid. Probably get worse. It's just not fair that... You should take me to see Indian's Grief now. You promised days ago, and... Here you are, you're just backing down in your promise. I'm, I'm losing my patience with both of you. Look, Lucy, you're gonna have to be patient a little bit longer. At least wise till those renegade Indians are out of this part of the country. It's not safe until then. We got time. You've been here less than a week. <laughs> really? You two, you're so silly. Afraid of a few frightened Indians. And James Finnemore Cooper's book, The Last of the Mohicans, why... Come on, Lucy, not another book writer. These are not storybook Indians. They're real and they're dangerous. They're not going to set you up as some great white princess and worship you. No matter what you've read in books, because these Indians have not read the same books. You don't have, you don't have to be angry with me. That's right. You ain't got no call to rear up and stomp on her like that. Oh, come on, Tuck. We've both seen what these renegades do to white women. It's not pretty. Now, we're not going until it's safe, and that's all there is to it. He's right, they ain't playing games. Hey. Come on, are we still friends? Sure we are. I guess I did jump on you a little quick, I'm sorry. Ready to go? Yeah. Hey, wait a sec. Looks like a little stone bruise. Be all right tomorrow. Lucy, you'll have to ride with me now. Slow down a minute. My horse has got a gait like a rocking chair. Lucy's going to be a lot more comfortable back of me. You got to think of her. You know, Tuck, I just don't believe you. You're, you're so noble. You know, you make that fella sit cart and look like, like a tin horn. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do, though. We'll flip a coin for it. Let me see that there coin. Can't trust your friends. Who can you trust? Call it in the air. Heads. <laughs> Doggone. Uh, little Joe, you just hang on to that there lucky coin. <laughs> tuck, tuck, tuck. That, that's the lame horse. Time you're ready. Lucy. Bye, Doc. So long. <laughs> you really think you're being fair to Tuck? Tuck's whole life has been the ranch. 
Ever since he was a little boy before his folks died, that's all he's thought about. Never even had a girl of his own. And all of a sudden, you come along, and he falls for you. I like Duck. I like him very much. Everybody likes Duck. There's a big difference between like and the way he feels about you. You seem to be very sure that I couldn't learn to return that love. You and Tuck? No. You don't have anything in common. Nothing at all, but it doesn't matter to Tuck because he loves you. You know, to him, you're not even a girl. You're, you're a princess out of a storybook. Oh, little Joe. Sometimes a girl wants to be treated like a princess. Why don't you come along with us? We're going out to Timberwolf Mine. We sure wish you would. We haven't seen near enough of you. Now I understand you'll be leaving for home in a couple of days. Going home? I'm sorry, dear. I meant to tell you. We're going to have to leave sooner than we planned. Timberwolf people are insisting that I go back east immediately to organize a mining syndicate. I understand, Daddy. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I, I hope you'll excuse me. I, I'm really very tired. I, I think I'll just stay here and rest. Of course. You take care, dear. Here. We'll see it. Well, we're gonna miss you. Thank you. Well, I miss everything. See, I'm afraid my whole morning's pretty well taken up. I have to deliver some supplies to my brothers down in South Creek. Of course, I could stay here a little while with you if you wanted me to. Oh, no, no, please. I, I think I'll just stay at home and catch up on some reading I have. Well, better be on my way. You sure you don't want me to stay with you? No, no, please. Okay. I'll see you later. to bust mama's boy this morning. <laughs> that dang horse thrown me again. Uh, getting tiresome him step on the same foot. You'd think he'd want some variety. <laughs> yeah, I noticed it didn't stop you from courting Lucy, though. Where is Lucy? She's in the house, isn't she? Oh, I figured she's with you. The horse she's been riding is gone. It's funny. She said she's gonna stay around the house and read. Taking her horse. She's probably upstairs reading one of her romantic stories in some kind of a trance. Hey, Lucy! <whistles> hey, Lucy! Now, knowing that girl, she's probably hiding somewhere under the furniture, laughing about it. Hey, Lucy, you in the kitchen? Why 
What is it? It's a note from Lucy. When I learned we were going home in a couple of days, I just couldn't leave without seeing Indian's grief. Don't worry. To the way we warned her. <laughs> well, we'll just go fetch her. She's probably sitting up there on that rock by herself. Yeah, if the Pirate Renegades don't find her first. I'll get the horses. I'll leave a note for Pa. Tell him where we're going. Grief. Sharp tongue. Joe Cartwright. It's been a long time. I see you've changed your name, Sharp Tongue. Now they call you he who scares women. You used to speak for me, Cartwright. Now you speak against me. I used to speak for the man who was my friend. I don't know you anymore. I have changed. I no longer take insults. I no longer take beatings. I no longer am a boy in the white man's school. So now you spend the rest of your life killing innocent people for the insults of ignorant children. I was a child, too. You're not a child anymore. You know, you once told me that the ways of the Indian were better and wiser than those of the white man. Is this how you prove it? By burning, by murdering? By proving that you're worse than the worst of us? Paiute's still better than white man. You'll see. The only thing I'll see is you hanging from the end of a rope. No. I saw this shirt in a dream. When I woke, I made shirt, just like in dream. As long as I wear shirt, nothing evil can happen to me. Manito himself promised it in the dream. Because you were once my friend, now I do more for you, Cartwright than white man would if he were on the warpath and had Paiute as prisoner. You are free. Go. She's my woman. He's my friend as we were friends in school. Let them go too. She is pretty for a white woman.
but too small for work. Two times, Cartwright, you try to save me from beating by other boys, and you are beaten with me. I show you I am better than white men. For those two beatings, I give you two lives. Yours and one other. Choose. What are you waiting for? Take her with you. Go on. Please. Go away with him, Lucy. Please. I'll be all right. <laughs> Go quickly, Cartwright, and do not come back. The next time we meet, remember, I will owe you nothing. Sharp Tom can always change his mind. It's an old Indian game. He gets a head start, length of a bow shot. If he can outrun him, he lives. And if not, he dies? Winner. You think you can find your way back? All right, then get going. You can't die now. I love him, little Joe. I, I love him. Lucy, listen to me. If you love him, then do what I say. I left a note for Pa. He knows where we are. He'll probably meet him on the way back. Tell him what's happening and tell him to hurry. Now go on. When does Sharp Tongue play woman's sport? I told you the next time we meet, I would kill you. This is woman's sport. My friend's leg is hurt. He can't run. If you want sport worthy of a warrior, let me take his place. Let him go free. And try to kill me if you can. 
I could always outfight you and outrun you. I still can. You know the game. You will have no weapon. I know the game. If you get away alive, he lives. But if you don't, he dies too. Go, Cartwright. What's going on? I'm taking your place. You can't do it. With that leg, you wouldn't have a chance. Now get going. See if Lucy's in her room. Martin. Yes, Ben. Lucy's not in the room. What? According to Little Joe's note here, she was headed for Indian's grief. Yeah, the renegade pirates were seen around there. Shall we get some more men? No, there's no place for that. Let's go. Tongue. The spirit of the great chief will destroy you if you fight on his burial grounds. My shirt will protect me. Uno Hashi. Cartwright, now I kill you.
You all right, son? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I had to... I had to kill Sharp Town. Rest of his braves rode off towards the reservation. Well, without Sharp Town, they have no lead in. No purpose. Let's go home. Little Joe. Thank you, son. Thank you very much. Me too. Little Joe. I'm sorry that my foolish romantic curiosity almost got you killed. But you... You were as noble as Sidney Carton. Maybe you'll know the difference now between... Living in what you read in storybooks. Doesn't the best man get a kiss from the bride? <laughs> now, what about the ushers? Hey, you got your kiss back at the wedding. Oh, wait a minute. When you got a whole gold mine, you ain't gonna be chinchy over a couple of little nuggets, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Take your nuggets and make them small. Look. Good luck. Thank you, little Joe. Little Joe, I've learned my lesson. Oh, I'm gonna... I'm going to be a, a good wife to him. I'm going to cook for him. I'm going to be practical. I'm, I'm going to even learn to sew and, and, and make my own clothes. I know you will. <laughs> All right, little Joe. Our turn now. Okay. <laughs> little Joe, I'd admire having a word with you. For sure, Brago. Excuse me, huh? What's up? I just want you to know I especially appreciate your saving me. Oh, come on, forget it. What kind of you being in love with Lucy yourself? What? I realize you didn't want to own up to it out there at Indian's Grief. But I know the truth. And I know it took a lot to save the life of a fella who was in love with your best girl. Who did that? The, no. Listen. You did exactly what that carton hombre did in that there book of Lucy's. 
Are you out of your head? I didn't... Do Don't you fret. I ain't gonna tell anybody. Especially Lucy. Doug, come on. Hey, Doug, that stage is ready. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Tuck, my very best wishes. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Pop! <laughs> Take good care of her, Tuck. I will. Watch your head. <laughs> Bye. What's the matter, General? Hmm? What's the matter? I just can't believe it. She's starting to think like him, and he's starting to think like her. Well, it's good. They say that compromise is the secret of a happy marriage. Yeah, but they just got married. Well, I mean, can you picture it a year from now? Huh. He'll be sitting there reading Dickens, and she'll be busting horses. <laughs> Elena, don't go too far away. We are leaving very soon. Ay, they have such spirit. Fools. Idiots. Papa, why do you allow them to come with us? Chasing Elena all over Nevada. Disgrace. Now, Margarita, they do no harm. Come on, and Papa, look at the dust. All Spaniards are loco. If Don Luis is as stupid as those two, I'd not marry him. Calmete, calmete. Oh. Ben! Yeah. Ben can't right down, Miguel. Senor! Are you all right? Do you think this is my normal way of disembarking? Of course I'm not all right. Help me up. Why do you gape and take down the luggage? Howdy, ma'am. My name is Hoss. This is my little brother, Joe. Well, why do you make conversation? I don't care what your name is. Take down the luggage. That's your job, no? Well, you heard what the lady said. Take down the luggage. Okay. Hey, Papa. They are not, sir. Then, my older daughter, Margarita. Senor Cartwright. Senorita, welcome to the Ponderosa. Senor. And this is Adam? Yes, we've met. Joe and Hoss. My sons. Your sons? It is just as well they would make very bad servants. <laughs> well, uh, let's get to the ranch. <laughs> Why do you gape? Take down the luggage. Staying nearly long enough, Miguel. See, si, amigo, not long enough for either of us. But we still have a long way to travel, and and Margarita is most anxious to meet the man she's going to marry. Oh, you mean they haven't met yet? Well, please understand, Adam. It is our custom that the father arrange these things for his daughters. With Elena, there is no problem, but Margarita, I... Ah, Ben, how often I have envied you, your sons. Well, I'll tell you, Miguel, I'm quite certain that my sons wouldn't want me to arrange any of their marriages, but there are sure times when I'd like to give it a try. <laughs> Die, 
Margarita, Margarita. Always the same. Perdón, me. No, 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 no lo tires. No. Margarita, ¿qué te pasa? Tengo muchas rabia. ¿Por qué? Because they live with us day and night, night and day, dance and sing. It, I cannot even have chocolate in peace. Margarita, are... no, 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 hablas así. Somos uh, caballeros. Ma caballeros. Margarita. Mono. Smashing up my good china. Mono. Por favor, querida. Get out. They do not have to live just because you say so. I do Mar not have to live with your two buffoons. Margarita, no te dé tanta rabia. Acuérdate, you may turn out to be my sister-in-law. You, you, my brother. No, no. Not today. Da! Never before have I seen her so silent. <laughs> you are to be congratulated. Our guest settled for the night? Yes, finally. Miguel says she's always been like this. Can't do a thing with her. I think he's afraid he'll never be able to marry her off. And with good reason. Come in. Senores. Oh, come in, gentlemen. Gracias. Gracias. Senor Adam. Senor Adam, we wish to express our admiration. For what you did this afternoon, senor. You actually silenced Margarita. And that was a true miracle. There's the voice of wisdom. I lose my temper and he calls it a miracle. No, but we are serious, senor. We love the little Elena. Si, and, and we would like to marry her. Both of you? Uh, si. si. But there's one little problem. Only one? Uh, Don Miguel, he requires that Margarita be married primero. Oh. If you could only gentle her a little. <laughs> so that when they meet, this Don Luis will not run away like all the others. The answer, senores, is no. Why not, big brother? You're pretty good at gentle and wild horses. <laughs> sure, it might turn out to be fun. You two stay out of this. I hope I do not interrupt. It's all right, senorita, I was just leaving. Senor, por favor, you have to help us. Why don't you help us? I can understand that. I could not help but hear you. I see that, like me, no one else can sleep, eh? Please, Adam. Allow me to speak. Well, sir. Adam, Luis Santana is our last hope. Margarita has frightened all the others away. One little thing that is not perfect, she explodes and whoosh, they disappear. Es verdad, señor Adam. Whoosh. If I permit Elena to marry before her older sister, the disgrace will make Margarita so full of fury that... Adam, have pity. Please, señor Adam. Please, señor Adam. Have pity. Please, Senor Adam. Por favor. Oh, pity. Please, please, Senor Adam. You're the only one that can help. 
Please, please help us. Add them. Por favor, please. ayuda a nosotros. Hey, Adam, looks like you got a regular Jim Danny prayer meeting going for you there, big brother. <laughs> get up, get up. What kind of crazy idea? What do you want me to do? Smack her every time she's bad, which is most of the time? Uh, perhaps this will help, Adam. I found it this afternoon. A play by your Englishman, Senor Shakespeare. Taming of the shrew. You might have known. Um, how did Shakespeare put it, Adam? Kill her with kindness. Kindness with that. Lovely lady. Silencio! Silencio! You have awakened me. I want to sleep. Ahora. That means now. You're right. She is a problem. But like you said, she's your problem, not mine. Oh, get up. <laughs> and then we were walking down the street in Juarez, and we were both in drag. But he was... oh, good morning. I hope you slept well, Margarita. I have not. First there is the noise, then there is something wrong with that bed. I'm sorry. It's crooked, it leans. I had to hold down all night long to keep from slipping to the bottom. <laughs> it is not so funny, Elaine. I could not close my eyes. Well, first thing after breakfast, I'll take a look at it. Let's see. I ask for chocolate, I get coffee. Margarita, por favor. Eh? Oh, fuck. It is very lucky for you, it's cold. I am going right. Joe, saddle a horse and go with her. Yes, sir. Oh, pobre de me. Manuel and Carlos are taking me riding. Margarita will run into them. Perdone me. To fatherhood. Uh, no, 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 no. First to marriage, I hope. Eh? <laughs> I will take that horse. Margarita, these horses are for Elena and us. I'll get another horse. Stand aside. When? I'm afraid we're going to get another horse. Tell me something, Elena. You want your sister to marry that Santana fellow, and so do your young men, and so does your father, but... But how does Margarita feel about all this? She has much pride, Senor Adam. Too much pride to admit to her private dreams. Even to me. But she is my sister, and I know her very well. Like, like all women, she longs for the beauty of a man's love. The sweet delight of a child in her arms. As I do, senor. It is a great pity. A pity. And so you push and push. Did you ever stop to think, Elena, that maybe you and everybody else might have just pushed Margarita to desperation? Perhaps we are selfish, senor Adam. But it is not only selfishness. We believe that Margarita could fu fulfill a man running over. We all hope very much, for her sake, that Don Luis will be that man. Check. Mighty pretty, ma'am. I sure wish I could play like that. Gracias. Perhaps you can, senor horse. Here. You try. <laughs> now, um, you put your fingers 
Dos. Yeah. This is a E chord, now strong. Fingers here, here, good. Now strong. No, this large onion is the fingers of a bear. Huh? I said we must uh, uh, have patience uh, uh, with the instrument. <laughs> Let me show you now. <laughs> it's impossible. Margarita. Dang woman I ever did see. Out of my toy. <laughs> that wouldn't happen to be my guitar. Adam. My new guitar? Adam. The one I sent all the way to New York for? Hey, you sure did. See that? It's got New York right there inside. Yeah, I see it. I'm sorry, Adam, but, as you said, she's a problem to everybody. All the way from New York. My new guitar. Amid this hurly, I intend that all is done in reverent care of her. And in conclusion, she shall watch all night. this morning. Did you sleep well? How can one sleep on the floor? On the floor? Why, was there something wrong with your bed? This stupid evil thing collapsed. I could not put it together. Well, I fixed it myself, uh, right after you complained. You fixed it, senor? Yes, uh, you should have called me when it collapsed. Called? Where were you when I called? Oh, you did call. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I... I didn't hear a thing. I... I must have been sleeping like a baby. Listen, senor, if you think it is very funny to spend the whole night on the floor... Uh, don't lose your temper so early in the morning. You won't have any left for the rest of the day. Um... Why don't you have some eggs? I fixed them myself. Oh, 
What are these? Eggs from a dodo bird? They taste like leather. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm not very much of a cook. Uh, maybe you would like to have some chocolate. <laughs> you see, I remembered that uh, you don't like coffee. It's cold. Don't you even know how to make chocolate? Oh, I am sorry, senorita. I, I am truly sorry. I I'll heat it up. Is there nothing ever right in this house? The bed, the food. Have you done? Oh, I am so sorry. I, uh, fortunately for you, it's it's cold. Maybe some water will help. You're making it worse. Oh, how can anyone be so stupid? It's not easy. Idiot! It's a conspiracy. Margarita? Okay. Have you slept at all this night? No. Thanks to Senor Adam, the bed fixer. I... I think he hates me. Oh, no, Margarita. On the contrary. He is very simpatico to you. <laughs> He thinks, perhaps, that Papa and I have pushed you too hard towards marriage. He does. What business is that of his? How dare he express an opinion? Because, as I said, he is very simpatico to you, as most men would be if only you would let them. You! You permit people to tread on you like a worm. That is not me. I... I have a fire inside of me. If I cannot explode, I will die! Querida, if only you could try sometimes to bank the fire a little. Perhaps. I will try. I will try. It is not that I always wish to be alone. I think perhaps I would like to marry. I know this. But your temper... So you have said, and Papa has said, and every Sutta has said too many times. Well, I am I. And any man, including Don Luis, must accept me the way I am. I wish to ride alone. I'm afraid not, senorita. The Ponderosa is a pretty big place. You might get lost. Then someone else will ride with me. There is no one else around, sorry. Margarita! Yes, Sitch! How dare you, senor? How dare you? You didn't tighten the cinch on your saddle. There is nothing wrong with this saddle. You make a fuss over nothing. I would have known if this saddle was slipping. <laughs> Do you see what you have caused? I tried to keep my temper with you, senor, but you are impossible. Maybe so, senorita. I am a man. 
of limited patience. And believe me, you try those limits beyond endurance. Looks like you'll have to walk home. You will walk, senor, not I. Oh, no, senorita. My horse is much too dangerous for you. You know I am excellent with the horse. I couldn't possibly let a delicate creature like yourself ride this animal. Then you will bring me one back. Senorita, you will walk. Whether in my company or by yourself, it is entirely up to you, but you will walk. Well, you do know about rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes? Of course, they uh, shouldn't bother you too much, but you can never tell about these wildcats. Well, have it your own way. Be surprised. I would like to ride. Yes? It really isn't so hard. Try it. Just once. Please. Your horse awaits, Senorita. Possibly be your Don Luis? It cannot be anyone else, can it? But he was not to come here. We. What am I to do, Signor? Have, have him see me this way for the first time? It does matter then what people think of you, hmm? We are what we are, Signor. But see, it does matter. No one wants to be alone, Signor. All right. I'll go over and talk to him for a few minutes now. I'll give you a chance to get upstairs and change. Grazie, signor. I regret my rudeness to you. I will try to apply the lesson you have tried to taught me. Hi, Madam Cartwright. Welcome to the Ponderosa. Luis Santana, at your service, senor. You'll think it's a little foolish of me, but I couldn't wait home any longer. I heard so much about Margarita. Uh, she is here, isn't she? Oh, yes, she's here. And uh, you are welcome, Don Luis. And uh, Don Miguel and uh, the entire family will be very delighted to see you. Oh, I wanted to meet this Margarita so much. And tell me, is she as beautiful as they say? Oh, yes, 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 she's very beautiful. And what about her nature, huh? Her nature? Yes, of nature. I heard she is very hot temper, huh? <laughs> uh, 
I, uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. People often exaggerate things, you know? <laughs> I hope you're wrong, senor. You do? What's a tiger without clothes? <laughs> it makes for more excitement. A man needs a good fight every now and then to warm the blood. I, mean, I should have gone to Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. uh, senor, uh, can we go to find my tiger now, please? Senor, huh? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Gracias, Manuel. Senor Cartwright, Don Miguel, may I propose a toast? Why, of course. Thank you. I propose a toast to Elenita, my future bride. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, senores, a toast, yes. But to my future bride. Your future bride? ¿Cuándo deciste eso? Ahora. Estás loca, ella se va a casar conmigo. Nunca, nunca, nunca. Ah, a bueno, a ver, Don Miguel, ¿con quién se va a casar con su quién? Con Esta, no, 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 nunca. Elenita, ¿con quién te vas a casar tú? Conmigo. Decídelo de una vez. Salud. Salud. What are you so glum about? Ah, oh, Margarita. Don Luis. Oh, Adam, you haven't taken her to my heart? <laughs> I haven't any good Spanish blood, remember? Oh, uh, I've convinced Don Miguel to stay on for a couple more days. It's really for Don Luis's sake. He's kind of tired and his ranch is quite a piece from here. And it is very kind of you, Ben. Oh, not at all, Don Miguel. You know that you're welcome to stay on here for as long as you like. Adam, what do you think? Well, I'm glad you asked, sir. I'm afraid things aren't working out exactly the way you planned. Oh? Now, you see, Don Luis wants to... Don Luis wants to meet your daughter, Don Miguel. I've heard so much of her beauty, among other things. I'm most impatient to see her. Well, I am sure that she will be here any moment, Don Luis. Ah. Very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, would you care for a demi tasse? I mean, uh, some chocolate? Oh, no, coffee is fine. Well, fine, fine. Ben, shall I set up the chess board? Yeah, come on, I'll help you. Right. May I sit next to you, senorita? Oh, please. I am most... <laughs> after you. Por favor, Don Luis, you first. I wanted to say you are most beautiful, Margarita. All the beauty of a Spanish knight is in you. Please, Senor, you are most kind. You and I are very much alike, I think. And I think the senor goes with much speed. Time alone will tell us this, no? Time moves too slowly for a man who is impatient with living alone. And I am, Margarita, very impatient. Don Luis, in this at least I must agree. We are alike. I have traveled very far to come to you. And with each passing hour, I wish ever more to please you. And I, you. We'll do very well together, Margarita. I'm sure. See, si. and all that is required is that I be uh, pleasant, 
and agreeable and uh, sweet, no? I don't mean to be insulting, but I have heard things that... What things have you heard, Don Luis? Well, that... Uh... Well, they say that if you are provoked, you... you rage. Like a firestorm. Huh? Gossip. Gossip. Malicious gossip. That it isn't true? A woman would be a fool to rage at the man that she would have loved her. For him, she should always bank the fire. Uh, you wanted to talk to me? Si, senor. This Margarita, I'm very disappointed. She's not at all what I expected. Uh, she's not? A beautiful woman, I was told, and a woman of fire. Now I think I've been misled. Well, you couldn't possibly mean that she isn't beautiful enough. Oh, no, senor. But the fire, where is it? You heard as well as I what she said, and I guarantee you there is no warmth in a banked fire. She was the same the whole evening. Her manners as meek as a lamb. Don't go jumping to conclusions. She's probably on her good behavior, after all. I... Adam, I'm a sheep rancher. I live surrounded by sheep, and I don't want a sheep for a wife as well. I can understand that. You've been with her for several days now. Is this what she's like, always? Well, it's... Uh... It's very difficult to judge a person, especially a woman, in just a few days. But that's exactly what I must do. Once we reach my hacienda, it'll be too late. I couldn't possibly send her away then. It'll be too cruel. I must decide before we leave here. Well, there's still tomorrow. I don't think another day will make any difference. But we're planning a picnic tomorrow. You know about picnics. Know about them, senor? Yes. They're just full of surprises. You son of a gun! <laughs> I got a ring in. Is that yours? It was a lovely picnic, no? Si, senorita. Look at that! Did you ever see such a beautiful moon? You joke, senor. Certainly not. Do you not agree that it is a beautiful moon? But it is the sun, senor. You are making fun. I say it is the moon. Of course, it is the moon, and very beautiful, just as you say. Senorita, it is obviously the sun that is shining up there. Now, are you trying to make fools of us all, hmm?
As it pleases you, Signor. The sun, the moon, a star is all the same to me. But look at my, my little Margarita. How like a dove, a little flower. Look, look how pleasant she looks. Yes, she's as gentle as a lamb. I'm afraid we have to talk later, you and I, Don Miguel. Margarita? Please, Signor, be kind enough to leave me alone. Believe me, I only wish I could. Senorita, you have my deepest apology. She slipped. Margarita, into the water! Carlos, stop laughing and go help Margarita out of the water! Uh, uh, Sielena, uh, Manuel, go get Margarita out of the water. Oh, Sielena. Manuel. Gracias. You are such a gentleman. Un momento. Un uh, momento. I am as much a gentleman as you are. I will get her out Carlos, of the water. Carlos, I only I'm very sorry. Manuel. But I am just as much a gentleman as you are. The water. I will Margarita. get her out of the water. Will I will get her out of the water. All right, then. You'll get her out of the water. Oh, no, I won't. You pushed me. That's right, Senorita. I most certainly did do just that. I am sure it was a mistake. Will you be kind enough? to help me out. Hey, Margarita, I deliberately pushed you into the water. Si, senor. If you say so, and now, would you help me out? I'll let you in. Let it be on your head. Why do you have to choose now to be so nice? <laughs> Senor, you are a barbarian. <laughs> 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 I understand what you're trying to do, Adam, but it's hopeless. Not even a sheep would have so much forbearance as that woman. Well, I've tried everything else. <laughs> Why not? Margarita! <laughs> you always go swimming with the clothes on? Remember you were going to be pleasant, sweet, agreeable, kind? Don't show now! Remember <laughs> oh, me! Oh, senorita, you are going to bank the fire. For what? If he's... If Don Luis was sweet, little... I don't want him! Why don't you get out and fight? Why don't you fight? You... How could I ever think I wanted a man? Rabbit! <laughs> For you! All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. She's all I hope for and more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my friend. It was a matter of honor. <laughs> Margarita! 
Bagian Rita yang tuang di banyak Rita. Congratulations. Well, Mr. Shakespeare, you mind telling me what's going on? Don't look so worried, Pa. This is the best picnic I was ever on. Uh, Dan again, I sure wish that you weren't leaving quite so soon. Ah, uh, so do I. And thank you so much for your hospitality. I tell you, I'm sure glad everything worked out uh, so well. What a relief. Muchas gracias, Senor Adam. I suppose you'll soon be getting married now yourself, hmm? Soon? Oh, no, Senor. Now I have to make up my mind. Con el permiso, eh? Ven en el Basta! Quietos! Adios, Senor Adam. Es tu culpa. Tú la hiciste tener tanta rabia. Tú! Senor Adam. Yes, Margarita. I found this last night when I could not sleep. For once it was not your fault I was too happy to sleep. It is yours, no? Mm hmm. I think it may be the way to tame a shrew, but not a woman of fire. Adios. Adios. <laughs> 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 Luis, be careful, my dress. Yes, my little tiger. <laughs> yeah. Adios. 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 Fie, fie, unknit that threatening, unkind brow. And dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the meads, confounds thy fame as whirlwind shake fair buds, and in no sense is meet or amiable. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, thick, bereft of beauty. And while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will deign to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy soul. company will furnish them in. You'll have them up at the Ponderosa by the time my little brother gets back with equipment, right? They'll be there. And for the wages you cartwrights are paying, I might just grab a shovel and go along myself. Well, so you'd be welcome. <laughs> Gentlemen, your eyes are about to behold a vision. A vision of angels fluttering wings. I present to you Miss Kelly Conrad.
out before they wrap their hands around their glasses and forget who we are. Come on, Ben! Come on! Who are they, anyhow? Old Ned Conrad and his daughter, Kelly. I can remember when they first started working in the saloons. She couldn't have been much more than, oh, ten years old. Thank you. Thank you. Evening, mister. Enjoying yourself? I always enjoy myself, Kelly, my love. I can afford to... Oh. What do I get for it? Wasn't my dancing enough? Nah. Time you and I got to know each other a lot better. Wait a minute. <laughs> Mr. Blake, I like a crowd when I dance, not when I kiss a man. Well, now, they don't bother me a bit. A little kiss won't ruin your reputation. Mr. Hurt the lady. Beat it. Sorry, miss. He ain't gonna bother you no more. You big clown! Who asked you to butt in? I thought I... I mean, what, all I did was... All you did was drive away the best customer in here. Look, mister, don't blame Kelly for what happened. We don't even know him. Stay out of the way. Oh, look, son, try to be reasonable. I said stay out of the way. Uh. Huh? You all right? No, I'm not all right. I think I broke my wrist. Where's my fiddle? One thing we don't need is any more help from you. Now just get away from us. Pa, I'll get you to a doctor. be able to scratch my ear with it for at least six weeks. How much money we got in the kitty? Not enough to last six weeks. Great. Just great. Well, what are you standing around here for? I just wish there's something I can do to help out. How about paying us for all the trouble you caused? Now, Kelly, it ain't his fault it ended up the way it did. Maybe not, but that still don't help us any. Hey, I got it, Eddie. Why don't the two of you come on out to Ponderosa with me? That's that's where I live, and you can hang around out there till, till you're able to work again. Forget it. We'll manage. Not so fast, girl. What do we have to do if we take you up on that offer? Not a thing in the world. Just lay around and eat three meals a day till you get to feeling better. Well, that's mighty generous of you, boy. Me and my daughter, we're pleased to accept your invite. Now, just one little minute. I ain't about to go anywhere. Especially with him. And that's final. Quite a place you got here, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, sir. Quite a place. Take you a long time to build up? Well, this part of a lifetime, I guess. But it was worth it. I can surely see where it would be. What do you do around here for excitement? Oh, play checkers and sometimes even have a song fest or two. Oh, so I don't think that's the kind of excitement Miss Conrad was inquiring about. Sure ain't. I like the kind of excitement people make when they laugh and drink and gamble. Uh, Hoss tells me that uh, you dance beautifully. She sure does, Paul. Doggone, you have to see it to believe it. Well, I certainly would like to. Perhaps one evening... You usually get paid when I dance. All you're going to get is a good tanning. If you don't apologize, then right now. So I'm sorry. I'm going to bed.
must have been the trip. She's wore down. Of course. I'm kind of wrung out myself. Guess I'll turn in. Good night. Good night. Kelly, see you for a minute? It's open. These people have gone out of their way to be nice. You have no cause to act the way you did. I said I was sorry. Well, saying it isn't being it. What is it, Funny Nose? Pa, let's get out of here. Right now, tonight. But why? Because we don't belong here, that's why. We never should have come here in the first place. Pa, ever since Ma died, it's just been the two of us, just you and me. Yes, just you and me. And it's been enough for you, hasn't it? More than enough. For me, too. So let's just keep it that way. We don't need anybody else. We do now. Leastwise, until my arm is healed. So like it or not, we stay here. You understand? You say so. I say so. And from here on out, behave yourself. No more smart talk. You hear? I hear. Good. Now kiss the old man good night. And you go to bed. And while we're here, don't use this room for sulking. Get out and learn how to do something. What, for instance? Milk a cow? Why not? Might come in handy one day. Night, funny nose. Milk a cow. Big deal. Hey, Miss Kelly! What's the matter? What, what happened? Milk a cow, says Pa. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I got more on me than in the bucket. <laughs> yeah, it takes quite an act to milk old bossy. <laughs> it sure must. That darn milk went every which way. Yeah, well, what happened, see, when you... When you pull north, you gotta aim west. I'll show you sometime. <laughs> Come on, show me now. No cow's gonna get the best of Kelly Conrad. Oh, oh! I'm sorry. Oh, I should have looked where I was going. Hi, Paul. Hello, Hoss. Why, <clears throat> I see you, you two have already met. Well, not formally, but pleasantly. Oh, Paul Mandel, this is Miss Kelly Conrad. Hello, Kelly Conrad. Hello. Well, look, come on in, Paul. Paul here is a gunsmith, Miss Kelly. He's just about the best deals in the country. There ain't no kind of weapon he can't fix. But that must be interesting work. No, just a living. Paul's got the chessboard all set up and waiting. Well, the chess takes a lot of concentration. Ben will probably win every game. Be the first dang dime he ever has. Look, Paul, you go ahead and make yourself at home. Me and Miss Keller's got some chores we gotta do. No, Hoss. That wait till later. I um uh, I gotta get cleaned up. Three in a row. I know when I'm licked. <laughs> uh. Oh, Kelly fixed us some sandwiches and brewed up a hot pot of coffee for us. Mm. Oh, it smells good and look, looks good too. Thank you, Kelly. Just something I thought you might enjoy. Mm. Well, that's awfully nice of you. You and your father plan to stay in Virginia City? Only until my fiddling arm heals up. Then it's over the mountain we go. Oh. Well, I hope you're enjoying your stay. Yeah. I didn't at first, but I do now. Remember this one, funny nose? 
It's the first song you learned to dance to. <laughs> that was too long ago. Oh, you were about four. Come on, show them what you can do. Well, now you're under no obligation, just if you want to. I want to, and for free. like that. If you're going to attempt a ballet step, do it right. Don't don't flop your hands around like they were wet mops. I never had any complaints before, mister. When if you, you do don't a, like it. You do a sauté en arabesque. Plie at the end of it with control. Always control. And... Oh, I'm sorry. I... I had no right to criticize. Forgive me. Well, it's late, Ben. I better be going. No, that's all right. I can find my own way out. Again, my apologies. Good night. What do you know? He didn't like the way you danced. He said so. And you just took it. He was right, Paul. It was so easy for him. Even with a bad leg. Why? Mr. Cartwright, why was it so easy for him? At one time, Paul was one of the leading ballet dancers in this country. You mean he was one of them fellows who dances on a fancy stage and in tight pants? Yes, he was one of those fellows. I met him when he came here to live in Virginia City. We become good friends. But his leg, how did that happen? We don't know. It's something he don't he don't like to talk about. could say something. I wouldn't feel so foolish standing here. Well, hello. <laughs> you busted up a good party the other night. That's a habit of mine. I'll try to do better next time. I asked Mr. Cartwright about you. He, uh, he told me a few things. Nothing of interest to tell about me? Oh, I thought there was. He said you're a ballet dancer, one of the best. I was once a ballet dancer, Miss Conrad. Just as I was once a small boy. Both are gone forever. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Would you teach me to dance the ballet? Would I what? Oh, I know I got no right, even thinking about it, me being a saloon dancer and all. But 
But once when I was small, my ma took me to see the ballet. It was so beautiful, it made my heart ache. I'll never forget it. I'd give anything, just anything, to dance like that. You came to the wrong person. I'm a gunsmith, not a dancing master. I figured there was no use, but I had to try. I'm sorry about what happened to you. I mean, your leg and all. I know what it must be like not being able to dance. Do you? Like being hollow and empty inside. Like almost being dead and still having to go on. That's what it would be like for me. You'd have to start at the beginning. Forget everything you've learned. There'd be no pleasure, no joy. Just brutal, agonizing work. You'll dance on feet that are raw and bleeding. And in the end, it could mean nothing. You still want to learn? When? Tomorrow. Here. In the afternoon. First position, hand in the bar. Heels together. Place the mirror. Up, apart, up, apart, up, apart. Away up. Don't look at them, they're still there. Now relax up here. Arm up. Look in the mirror. Now relax here. First position. It's yours. <sighs> Time you were up on your toes. Try them on. They're beautiful. I never had a gift so wonderful. They're not a gift. They're tools of your trade, something you need. Time you'll come to hate them.
relax. That's it. Or relax up there. Straight. Straight. Out, out. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Just do it right. Now, again. And. All right, again. And. Hello, Huss. Hi, Paul. That's it for the day. Find time tomorrow to work on what I've shown you. Hoss, uh, you bring her in earlier tomorrow. She needs all the practice she can get. I sure will, Paul. Gracious, Kelly. You shouldn't even be on those feet, much less dancing. Does Paul know about this? He knows. Now stop worrying, Hoss. I'm fine. Are you sure? Sometimes I do a step, and I know it's right. It's like a happy bubble bursting inside me. This really means a lot to you, doesn't it? It means everything. You, uh, you sure it's just the dancing? What else is there? Well, there's, uh, there's Paul, for example. There's nothing else. I'm the pupil, he's the teacher. That's it. Here you are, all tired and wore out and me asking a bunch of dang fool questions. Come on, I'll take you home. I go change. Straighten that knee. No, no, no. Look, you're not using your arms right. Uh, let, let your arms, your hands tell the story as much as your legs. All right, start the series again. And. Straighten that knee. Don't lose the center. That just about the prettiest sound you ever did hear? Dang near it. How's the hand doing? Oh, the fingers are still a little stiff, but they'll work out in time. I just ain't got the words to thank you, Hoss. Ned, you don't need to. I was responsible for you other than getting busted. The least I can do is buy you a new fiddle. How do you think Kelly's gonna like it? Like it? She'll climb up the walls and dance all over the place. <laughs> yeah, as, uh... Has Kelly showed you any of the new stuff she's learning? No, but I guess she's going to surprise me. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it ain't like no dancing she's ever done before. Dancing is dancing. If it doesn't work out, we'll just throw it out of the act. Not that Kelly ain't grateful like I am, Hoss, but she's going to be one happy little girl when I tell her we're leaving out soon. Yes, sir, uh, I'll bet you she can hardly wait to get back to all that noise and excitement. You know something, boy? So am I. You coming in? As soon as I stable horses. See you in a while, then. Whoop! Get him. Soften your arms a little more. Keep your back straight. Straighten that knee. That's that's still.
still not right. When you do PK turns, don't travel with them so much. Keep your arms closer into your body. All right, now start that again. And. Now, that is still not right. You've got to spot more and keep those arms closer to your body. Now, let's do that series again, right here. Now, maybe you've got all the bad ones out of your system. You'll do it right. Again. And. I guess I was just being envious of what you could do. And what I know I'll never be able to do again. See, up until five years ago, the ballet was my life. It was a complete life. And then, uh, train wreck and this, and my life was over. Oh, I still went on, I still existed. I even convinced myself that what I had here was enough. And then I watched you dance. All the memories came flooding back. All the torment. And why? Why did you teach me? Because there's a greatness in you. A wonderful gift that touches so few. I couldn't deny that. This is from the San Francisco Ballet Company. You're to audition for the impresario. Audition? Oh, I can't. I'm not ready. You're ready. You'll make it. Oh, at first you'll dance in the chorus. Uh -huh. But in time, you'll be a ballerina. One of the finest. A ballerina? Oh, I want to believe that, but... Afraid. You believe it. You'll travel a world over. Paris, London, Rome. You'll dance before presidents and kings. Paul, what about you? I've been offered a job with the company. As a dancing master, I've decided to accept. Would that mean you travel with the company? Yes, I'd go along. Does it make you happy, or doesn't it? I'm happy. Very happy. Hello, Paul. Funny nose. Surprised to see the old man? It's a nice surprise. I just rode into town with Hoss. Look. Good as the day I bought them. <laughs> That's great, Pa. Just great. And look what else I got here. Hoss gave it to me tonight. A present. Now listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Isn't she a fine dandy? This here little old violin is going to make us a heap of money. Pa, I got to tell you something. I hear tell that they hit a vein of silver ore in Concho. That means that the whole town is going to be jumping with miners just waiting to fill our pockets with money. Pa, I've got to tell you this. You know, son, ever since Kelly and I have been putting on our act, I always told her that I was the star and that she just went along for the ride. But she's a grown woman now. And I can tell her. You're the star, funny nose. You always were. And the fiddle and me, well, it was us went along for the ride. We need you. We 
Without you, we ain't nothing at all. I wanted you to know. I'll be out when I've changed. I appreciate what you've done for my daughter. As soon as we get a few dollars ahead, I'd like to pay you for your time and effort. Already been paid, Mr. Conrad. Many times over. Great to get back into harness again. It'll be just like before, you and me. Like you said, we don't need anyone else. That's right, isn't it, Funny Nose? We don't need anyone else, do we? That's right, Pa. Just you and me, like before. Let's go try out my new violin, huh? not. Only don't get too fancy with those introductions. staying any longer. Ned, has Killer told you about the offer she got? No. Oh. What was that? They wanted to try out from San Francisco Ballet. Oh. And Paul says she could have made it. And maybe she couldn't have made it. And it would have all been a waste of time. It's a bunch of foolishness anyway. How do you know? I've never seen her dance a ballet. Like I said before, dancing is dancing. It's all the same. Besides, she told him she was through with it. <laughs> Hi. Hi, yourself. I'm sure going to miss you, Miss Kelly. I miss you, too. I wonder if you'd do me one favor before you leave. Name it. 
Anything you ask, boy. Well, I'd like to see you dance one more time. Well, that ain't asking for much. But surely we'll do it. Any special tune you'd like to hear? No. But I'd... I'd like to see you do it in these. No, I don't want to. I can't. Now look, girl. Haas asked for one small favor. We owe him that much. Go ahead. so beautiful.
Bye, ballerina. Thank you, ma'am. The nicest gift anybody ever got. I'll give you these back. Kelly, look at me. You love the old man? <laughs> That's a foolish question. Then humor a foolish old man and answer it. <laughs> All right. I love you. And you believe me when I tell you something? I never had reason to believe otherwise. What's this all about, Pa? You don't belong in these places anymore. You don't belong with me anymore. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Rome, Paris, London, big, beautiful theaters. Places where you do belong. Dancing the way you were meant to dance. Pa, I won't listen to talk like that. You will listen. There's a man out there who loves you. And you love him. You've got something good together. Like your ma and I had. Don't lose it. I want to be with you. Because you think I want you to. I did. But I don't anymore. Most of my life is behind me. I've got no regrets. It was a good life. But yours is up front. I want you to have it funny nose. I want you to have your life. Go to him. Tell him. I say you'll find a way get going <sighs> should open some windows smoke in here is likely to blind a man Use one. The ballet company. Does it visit San Francisco much? Three times a year. One thing about San Francisco. With all those saloons, they they can always use another fiddle player. Yeah, they sure can. <laughs> 